peace, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to Getting It Off Her Chest. And I have the beautiful Karen Burge from Newcastle with me today. We're going to be chatting about medicinal, I keep saying medicinal, I don't know what, medicinal cannabis, hemp, yeah, cannabis. Uh, and we're going to get into a really juicy conversation about this because we need to get the awareness out there of, of this um, plant medicine. And, uh, you know, the world's changing. We're, we're more open to these things. There's few people that are just a little bit behind the eight ball. But I guess our conversation today is going to give people some awareness of what cannabis is doing and how it's helping people. And um, so I'm going to hand it over to you, Karen. And I thank you so much for this conversation. I've known you for about seven years, I think. Yes. Uh, and when I was living in Newcastle and... Um, it's a, it's a beautiful connection that we've had all these years yes. and I, I'm really happy that um, that you actually approached me and said I need to get something off my chest. So your opportunity, baby. Okay. Thank you, gorgeous. Okay. Um, so my name is Karen Burge. I am the Vice President of, President of the Church of Ubuntu and also the co-founder of the Church of Ubuntu and I also run the Wellness Clinic here in Newcastle. So I, along with thousands of others in our community, actually consume cannabis as food for the nutritional, medicinal and disease prevention benefits. Um, as a community, we believe that all Australians deserve immediate affordable access um, and our first choice should be homegrown if that is an option for us. Um, we also, we don't look at cannabis as a quick fix and as a wonder cure. It is, you know, you know, we are, we believe that what we, um, our food is our medicine and everything that we put into our body is either feeding wellness or disease, you know. Um, so we definitely look at, as a, at, a, at cannabis as a food. We consume it as food and along with other dietary guidelines. Um, you know, I, I believe our body knows how to heal when we create the right environment and the best way to do that is to reduce the toxins we're putting in and on our body. Mm -hmm. um, we were born with an immune system. We were born, our body was born we were born to function best on the plants that nature provided for us. Correct. I believe. Yeah. Yes. And I definitely um, believe it's easier to prevent disease and treat it. In our community, we've assisted over 10,000 people in the last five years. And wow. It's been, it's been so beautiful. It's so beautiful to watch people, the needless, the, the suffering reduced. It's so beautiful yeah. to know that every single person the majority, like 98% of people that have come through to us have a better quality of life. And it's just, it's not just those people, Jay, it's all their family members that watch, yeah. that are sitting by watching family members needlessly suffering and they're feeling helpless. And then all of a sudden their symptoms are reduced and they're, you know, they're, they're walking again. They're throwing, you know, 90 year old women are throwing away their walking sticks. And yeah, it's just it's so amazing. beautiful to watch, but it's also been, traumatic because I'm mm. um, knowing that while there's thousands of people that have got this option there's millions that are missing out mm -hmm. and, and the government are trying to you know stall it to see how they can make the most money out of an isolated compound or a, yeah. or a synthesized version of a plant that nature provided for us you know mm. this plant has been consumed as food and medicine for thousands of years Correct. prior to prohibition and mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's been a big, big journey, um, but very rewarding just watching the suffering, especially working with children with epilepsy. Mm. It's, it's um, you know, that's another whole big subject in itself. Yeah. But. I mean, there's so many videos out there, aren't there, on the internet now of um, situations where people, epilepsy and um, Parkinson's and, yep. you know, within... Autism. Yeah, within a couple of minutes, you can see the results. And obviously, you know, we've got a medical system set up that's really pushing hard on the, the pharmaceuticals because it's all about the mighty dollar. Whereas, you know, if we all grew our own plants, right, yeah. we wouldn't need that shit. No. And this, just, this is the problem, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This plant is as cheap to grow as parsley. Um, mm -hmm. No recorded deaths ever in history. Yeah, you know, we can go into a supermarket and buy refined sugar or alcohol or cigarettes um, or pharmaceutical drugs, and they are all leading causes of death. Like, oh, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy, and yeah, it is. It's phenomenal to watch, and um, 
yeah, it's a it's a big journey, but it's so rewarding. Once you learn the truth about cannabis, you can't turn your back and walk away. And you know, I live in, on top of a building, as 44 stairs to the top, and I was so sick with chronic fatigue mm. that I'd walk 10 10 stairs and stop. And and I did that, and and I'd babysit my grandchildren. My little grandson would say, you know, why do you always fall asleep, man? You know, because I put a movie mm. on and I'd fall asleep. And now. Like I'm, I take them out and I'm running, dragging them around the beach on their boogie boards, and you know I take yeah. them home and they're in the back, passed out asleep, and I'm like, all right, what's next? It's, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's so, yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing to to be able to. I, I was I was really sick. I was uh, chronic fatigue, severe post traumatic stress, yo yo dieter for over 30 years. I thought yeah. that I was fat when I was 16, but I wasn't. Um, but yeah, the I've been my ideal weight now for the last three years, um, and I just feel amazing. And I love, I'd love everyone to have that option. That possibility. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it's it's made for us, isn't it? It, yes. it respond, our bodies respond to it in yes. such a like. Well, because it's the endy endo. Endocannabinoid system is our regulatory system. It governs our immune system, our endocrine system our cardiovascular system, our metabolism, everything is governed by our endo endocannabinoid system. And the easiest way to turn on our endocannabinoid system is by consuming cannabis, hemp seeds, um, exercise, even singing apparently activates and strengthens your endocannabinoid system. Our children, our babies are fed uh, cannabinoids when they're through breast milk. So the oh, wow. same cannabinoid components that are found in cannabis are also found in breast milk. Yeah. So that's why they the ones, the babies that are breastfed are just sitting there like, you know, looking yeah. blissed out because they're blissed <laughs> out. It's got, it's all, it's the bliss mon molecule is yeah. in cannabis and cannabinoids. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just a fascinating subject. And the more I learn, the more I want to learn. Yes. And, and the more I, yeah, the, I, I have become frantic. I believe I look back and because, you know, when I first discovered, I started learning about cannabis, I moved in with um, BJ Footer, who is the founder of, also the co-founder and the president of the church of Ubuntu. Mm. And he was the vice president of the New South Wales Hemp Party then. So yeah, I started right. to learn about hemp and I've gone and cannabis and I've gone, wow. I started publishing a little magazine, Cannabis Hemp Guide. And, and I did become frantic. You know, my dad fell off a ladder when he was 32 and he's lived with chronic pain for 30 years. I, I wanted it for him. Yes. Know? My brothers have Crohn's disease. I've seen that so many people over the world are having success and they're in remission from Crohn's disease. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I wanted it for them. I wanted it for all my family and friends. And, and then I, I witnessed a little three-year-old boy go from 1,500 seizures one day to five the next. And that was like, that was a game changer. That was when yes. I just put my hand up and said, these children don't have a voice, but I yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and we went on to help hundreds of children after that, and we still do. And it's it's just so rewarding watching them smile and laugh for the first time at the age of four, or being able Absolutely. to hold their head. And and you know, there's so much. You know, I believe that every politician should go and spend their life in the family with a family living with epilepsy, mm -hmm. um, right? For a week, because the it's like a a lot of the time the families separate. A lot of the time the parents are separated and they're not together, but one family in particular I work with, they're still together, but it's like tag team. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, mum's up through the night, dad works through the day. It's just such a, they don't have a normal life. They just can't say, I'm going to Auntie Mary's 40th birthday. Let's get in the car, kids. Like, there's hours of preparation and then, and every seizure's like, carries the potential of um, death or brain brain damage, you know? It's, it's so heartbreaking watching this. And knowing that these children are getting better quality of life with a plant that their parents um, are growing in their backyard. The ones, oh, Dr. Andrew Catalaris last November proved in a court of law that cannabis is a medical necessity for children mm. with intractable epilepsy. And, wow. um, and the parents in that case were actually growing their cannabis in their backyard. And, and they'd come to Andrew with the child convulsing. In, yeah. His father had come to this... Um, Andrew said, my daughter's dying, please help her, and she was convulsing. 
Mm. So he just, that's his passion start. And that was Daisha Magic Stevens. So if anyone wants to look on YouTube, Daisha's yeah. now about 14. She's been seizure free for many years. She has a Beautiful. pretty normal life. And it's, um, yeah, there's many like that. And it's, it's, it's just, as far as I'm concerned, um, prohibition is the gateway to needless suffering, in mm -hmm. my opinion. My yeah, honest and, opinion. and Andrew was, um, you know, detained, wasn't he? He was in jail yeah, for a time. Yeah, uh, twenty week, twenty two weeks. Mm. Um, he was in jail, and it was it was just horrific. To it was sad to go up there and see him, and um, and know that um, and I went and visited him one day, and and he told me that at three o'clock every afternoon they locked down, and and sometimes they let them out the next morning, and sometimes they don't. So my friends came up to Cessnock with me and they packed a picnic lunch. So I went up to see Andrew or well, they waited outside and then we went up to the mountain and had a picnic lunch. Yeah. And I was just sitting there enjoying my cheese and I think there was wine and looking out and then I looked at my clock and it was 3 o'clock and I just went into it. I was so sad because I knew this man who had dedicated his life to stand up for every single Australian's rights to a plant that is our yeah. birthright was in jail because he yeah. wanted. He, he said that, and he knew that he knew that we had to push it that far that one of us went to jail. And he said, "I've been there before." And he put his hand up. He said, "I'll bring them to me. You know, I'll, I'll do something so that they come to me." So he administered cannabis to our little beautiful little um, boy Chase on national TV uh, yeah. with the vision to with the intention that that would draw the attention of the police and arrest him so that he could end this crazy war on cannabis and end, um, end childhood epilepsy, which is his vision, of, which we've, we've been working on for the last four years. And it's so, still it's still a work in progress, isn't it? Still, because yes, yes. It's still, well, yeah. We're still bashing our heads against a brick wall with yeah, politicians yes. and, yeah. you know, the government. And, and we kept getting told, go to talk to your politicians. Well, Andrew's been doing this for 30 years and he's been talking to them for 30 years and they're not yeah. listening because they've got, they've got a, a, an agenda and they've got, they, you know, they think that they can make money through the pharmaceutical. You know, I think that every single person that is um, withholding cannabis from our people is doing so to the detriment of themselves and their loved ones. Yeah. So all the politicians, um, all the police that are enforcing all of this, their loved ones are missing out. Mm. And they call the you know communities like ours black market. We're not black market, we're compassionate carers. If people, if those police need, and their family and friends need medicine, they know where they can get it. Yeah. You know, they know where they can come and it's safe and reliable. And, and yes, yeah, that's a whole nother subject. You know, there's so many different aspects of it. Like for example, um, you know, I spoke to a police officer the other week and, and she said, oh, you know, um, we, we're trying to get rid of the cannabis people in our community. And I said, that's such a shame, you know. I said, because mm -hmm. alcohol and street drugs are such uh, worse drugs for recreational therapy. And yeah. when the time comes when my um, grandchildren try want to try a recreational therapy, I would much rather them have try cannabis that I'm growing in my backyard Oh. rather than alcohol or street drugs that have God knows what on them, you know what yeah. I mean? So well, ice, ice is an epidemic right now. I mean, I just spoke to a guy in my shop yesterday who came in and said he had a fight with, uh, I think there were seven kids yeah. who king this young girl and he said, and I looked at them, I could tell they're all, and they're 14 year olds and they're all, their eyes were like wide and they're on this ice. Yeah. I mean, do you ever see any of that sort of business with people? Yeah. Yes. No, you don't, honey. You don't. Yeah. 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 And I said to a police officer once, that, you know, I said, would you, I said, all oh, you guys need it too. Like we're fighting for the police and the emergency workers to have this plant. There are so many of them that are getting great results with, with cannabis yes. for post-traumatic stress. It's the best natural treatment for post-traumatic stress. Yeah. And I said to him, wouldn't you, you guys need it. We are doing this for you guys too. And he goes, well, he said, I said, you know, it's good for post-traumatic stress. He said, I'd rather use rum. I said, okay, oh. so you would rather go to a party with a, a group of people drinking rum rather than smoking cannabis? And he didn't, he didn't have a reply then. So, you know, I know they're being um, 
hoodwinked <laughs> like the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's definitely, I, I love talking to them. I love, you know, I, honestly, I'm in standing up for all Australians' rights. That includes the police. They deserve it. They've got loved ones that need this plan. Um, yeah. And, well, yeah, like, yeah. It's just a program. We've been programmed. Yes. Yeah. From it for, for, you know, how long has this been going on for? Um, since, been... Yeah, the late um, 1800s, early 1900s, when the introduction of synthetic medicine um, came yeah, right. became a threat then. Yeah, so over wow. a hundred years, yeah. And we're yeah, still still bloody trying to fight for the right. Yeah, and we're suffering because of it. I believe that we're so sick because of it, because it does turn on your well-being switch. Your endocannabinoid system is your well-being switch. I'm a walking, talking example. There's thousands of people in our community that are walking, talking. In yes. an ideal world, we would be growing it in our backyard, taking the leaves off, non-psychoactive, putting it in our smoothies, and we yeah. probably wouldn't even need it for medicine if we were eating it as food. Yeah. yeah. So My sim simple but so frustrating. Yes, yes, it has been. Right? Uh, yeah. So, so where's Ubuntu at at the moment? I mean, how do you guys get to get it out there? Well, How does it happen? Um, okay, so we just basically offer people um, dietary advice. So people just fill out an intake form on our website and then we, we've got all these beautiful consultants that, that just um, go through a, a phone conversation and talk to them about some simple dietary guidelines and how how they can introduce cannabis to their diet. And, mm. you know, the, yeah, of, of the people in our community, a large majority of them are um, over 60. You know, yeah, and, right. And I also started um, doing a bit of the Kenananas tour a few years ago. I think. Oh I yeah, I remember that. that. Yeah. And that yeah. was first from from looking at seniors, thinking these beautiful people that have worked so hard their whole life to get to an age. You know, I'm going to retire. The kids are growing up. I'll be retiring. I'll be doing this and doing that. And they're all suffering. The majority of them are suffering. They'll go to a doctor and get a medication that has side effects. And so they need more medications for the side effects. <laughs> And yeah, they're it's suffering just... <laughs> so bad and it's needless. It, they don't have to be. They could be growing their own vegetable. We, we can see cannabis as a vegetable. They could be growing their own vegetable in their backyard um, and just, you know, how beautiful would that be? I, I, my vision was originally to see it in nursing homes and everything. Imagine all yeah. the seniors out there, you know, know, watering their plants and that. Yeah, <laughs> everyone would be happy and healthy. That's the, that's the thing. And, and with Big Pharma, like every person that gets success from cannabis is a lost customer for them. Well, that's so, it, right? Yeah. So, so, um, so how do we this? I don't even like calling it win the war, but how do we, we keep what do you think? The new. We keep building the new, we keep educating. Um, if anyone is interested in, in the work I do and our community does, I encourage you to get onto our website and have a look at our constitution and our resources and, and sign up, become a member and join our community because um, it's people power, you know. Yeah, it is. Um, people power, education. Uh, we all deserve a basic fundamental human right is immediate affordable access to cannabis. And we're supposed to plant our seeds on Father's Day and harvest on around Mother's Day. And every year we get to that Father's Day and I'm so thinking, wow, we need just people need seeds just to – and, you know, if, if we're growing um, our own seeds and I encourage people to do it. Honestly, I know – Apparently, I'm breaking the law by saying that, but I, you know, I just, I, I just can't get my head around that, that how that's wrong, and I don't believe it's wrong. Well, look, look at what alcohol does. I mean, let's I talk know. about alcohol. Yeah, and the, the, the disease is caused by alcohol, how and the, you? Yeah. how much um, violence is created, and yeah. we've got kids, you know, who get start drinking and they binge. Yes, and just. They're, they're, they're ill the next day, they feel like shit, they, they can't get up and do their jobs, you know, they think that, that, that it's cool. I mean, yep. we've still got that thing that goes along with, you know, your drinking's cool and yeah. and then and smoking a joint is, I mean, smoking is not the best way. I mean, you can eat the stuff, right, and take it yes. in oil and stuff, but um, for a relaxant and that, you know, that it's frowned upon, Yes. And seen as something so evil, yet yes. you look at alcohol and see what that does yes. to people and the 
the amount of damage it does. It's crazy. I know, Jay. And I was in a domestic violent relationship and I, my ex never, ever hit me when he was sober or stoned. Like it was alcohol, always alcohol fueled. Mm. And binge drinking, uh, I was suffered severe post-traumatic stress from some childhood issues. And I was a binge drinker until I got to the age of 35 and my daughter was becoming a teenager and I looked at her and I thought, I need to heal this because I don't want her following this path. And mm. and that's why cannabis has helped so much. I use it for post-traumatic stress and that's when all the unconscious eating and the binge eating and all of that, the binge okay. drinking, binge eating and all that stopped. Um, yeah. So, and, and another issue too with all the police raiding the bush pot, then the people, everyone wants a recreational therapy. You need to escape from this world. If you're not being disturbed by or affected by what's going on around you, then you're probably asleep, you know what I mean? Oh, so we, yeah. all, we all yeah. need something. People mostly do on a Friday afternoon, they're like, oh, my God, let's get pissed. End of the week, I've worked my ass off, I want to relax. Yeah. Treadmill of life, yep. I want to chill out and, the, yes. and everyone's boot up and falling yep. around and driving to things and it's yeah. crazy it's yeah crazy. absolutely honey and the, and the raids that are taking the bush pot are actually it's causing so much more damage because then people are going i've, I've had people that say to me i just want to buy a bush pot i just want to have a kind of bush pot or a joint but all i'm being offered is ice laced with stuff it's it's increasing that use even in portugal where they where they um you know ended the prohibition of all drugs the crime yeah. rate stopped. There was no teenagers. That, you know, it was changed everything. It was a game changer, and we should follow that way. That's a, definitely a, a a beautiful way to uh, to move forward. I believe. Um, I, I find all drugs. I find Australia just so behind the times. You oh, know, absolutely. It's honey, not yeah. a progressive country at all. No. It, it's like we we follow. America, or I mean, the, it, it's legal in some states in America, right? Yes. But yep. on the whole, it's just come on, Australia. Yeah, you know, it's just yep. so fucked. It's really frustrating. Yes, it is absolutely lovely, and, and yeah, it's, it's yeah. I'm definitely feel your frustration. I've been feeling it for the last five years, and um, but it and has been fuel. It has been fuel, and yeah, and, yeah, it's been my fuel. I turn it into fuel, and go, okay, then what can we do about it? I'm so traumatized oh. about it. What can we do about <laughs> it? <laughs> That's it. We can always rant and rave about it. I mean, it's important to know, but it's also like solution focused yes. and get enough people like learning. I mean, if I went to my parents, I mean, I should, they didn't even know I do podcasts, so I should send this to them yes. and educate them. I mean, they're in their 80s, but they're on so many bloody pharmaceutical drugs that the doctors every week. And their health is going down and they just go, well, it's old age. And I'm like, no, well, it doesn't no. have to be. I've seen 80-year-olds skipping around the world. Yeah, <laughs> you know? absolutely. There's plenty of them there for sure. So, yeah, definitely. And they deserve it. They've worked so hard to serve our community yes. and raise our ch raise their children and build this country. It's, it's their basic fundamental human right. They definitely deserve it above. We all do, but, yeah, definitely up there on my, okay. on my list. Just just see it as a uh, you know dope smoking hippie um you know the the 60s the 70s it, yeah. it was like that they were peace lovers right yes that's so right yes. yeah. yeah i know exactly right it's better than drunken fuel alcohol fueled drunken violence you know definitely and, and and we're in the pill age as well right yes yep so it's frightening, and the stories we're hearing about children, like they said, they're, they're going to try recreational therapy. They are going to try it. There's no doubt about that. So let's give them something safe. Let's grow our cannabis in our backyard so we know what they're trying when they do try it. I, yeah. I think a lot of parents out there would probably agree with that. Um, a lot, Many I've spoken to agree with that, that's for yeah. sure. Um, can I ask you, there's a lot of... Um, CBD oil going around and there are companies that are selling that and what, what do you say about those sort of um, whole plant I'm a whole plant girl uh, I love my CBD through the day my THC at night I think you're missing out by getting just CBD and a lot of the CBD is just an isolated compound 
So this plant has over 550 constituents in this one little plant. That's vitamins, minerals, terpenes, all these goodies in this plant. And they're pulling out CBD, just one little bit. You're missing out on the whole thing. You're missing out. So it's, the it's, purely, it's purely because the THC is the illegal component. So that's why they do. Is that? That's probably why they're pushing that and to take the emphasis on of THC. But if you want to heal, if you want to sleep, if you want to, um, if you want pain relief, if you want cancer fighter, you need both T CBD and THC. Oh. Yeah, right. And, and apparently, um, Ian McGregor um, mm. from Sydney University has done research, and apparently, if you have your THC in a capsule, um, it doesn't show up in the roadside testing. Oh, and that's been proven, which is very good news because, you know, while we're witnessing people having better quality of life, they're so petrified to be driving, even though the countries where um, cannabis has been legalised, it's actually proven that, um, that, that cannabis users are safer drivers and the testings yeah. are faulty and there's so much, we don't know how long it stays in your system. But remember, this plant is our companion plant. It wants, mm. if, if we've got cancer cells we've got extra receptors on them to take in the the cannabis mm -hmm. so it the thc will stay in our body as long as it needs to because its job is to achieve and maintain homeostasis yes. it wants to go in and fix what's out of body out, out of balance in our body when we go yes. back and look at the endocannabinoid system and that's yes. why i believe that every when you look at the endocannabinoid system and the relationship between cannabis and the endocannabinoid system that I can honestly say with truth in my heart that I believe that every single Australian would have better quality of life with this plant in their diet, consuming as food for that reason. So that's my... It's that, it's that bloody... And you, you can even put it in your pipe and smoke it if that's your choice of recreational therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. And I think it is. I think it's the way we're going and we've just got to keep... You know, yeah. as you, you guys are doing great work, and you just got to keep getting out there and educate, like you said, educating people. Yeah. And like this video, I hope, or and this podcast, I hope people really listen to the information and and get um, jiggy with it. And you know, I just think it's it's a well, beautiful plant. As as all plant I've done, you know, ayahuasca and and um, everything like that would just really takes you to another place it, it you 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 have an understanding of what this life is all about the truth comes through doesn't it so yeah absolutely and you you're, connects us all connects yeah. us all you know and that's what we need we need community we need connection we've just grown so distant yeah, and you know. and apart from each other that there's just such a jarring and and um i just appreciate what you guys are doing and everybody that's on that on that bandwagon <laughs> yeah. thank you darling thank you gorgeous so our website is church of ubuntu org. i'll put and, a link on here yeah and um yeah i love what we do and it's so beautiful to yeah talk to people every day and, and hear their testimonies i've had so many like you know little oscar was amazing you know 1500 seizures one day five the next he was three back then um and you know just people just throwing away their walking sticks or you know people are saying you know my partner was bedridden and couldn't get out of hospital and within a couple of days he felt better and was out of hospital so many people have come to us in palliative care over the last few years and they're still here years later you, you know you take you know you have a community supportive community add cannabis to your diet hemp seeds reduce the toxins you're putting in and on your body give your body that opportunity to heal and to and and it's a game changer and it's, a, it's the green tick it's the green yes, tick it's the green tick <laughs> yeah yep. well thanks my love thank, thank you, you for Jay. sharing that with us and i love your passion and thank um you, lovely. we'll get this going just keep thank doing, you so much doing what we do and um yeah and yeah thank you all for listening Definitely. and your health is your biggest asset so honestly take your health back into your own hands and yeah. Eat, Absolutely. Eat nature's medicine that was provided to us for food. Yeah. I'm going to go and have some right now. <laughs> Yay. Love you. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks,